distorted, colorful characters, a traditional baule mask spray-painted on the scruffy building in the old town of Bassam, a way for Zorpi, street artist and painter, to write a new chapter of history on the walls of this relic of the colonial era. I'm doing this to help my brothers love African culture. This is a colonial era wall, so it's like fusion art. A fusion that seems to be inscribed in each and every alley of the Quartier de France, a symbol of the country's complex history. For Zorpi, all of this makes up Bassam's DNA. This is an artistic area in a UNESCO heritage site. There are many artists here. It's a place that inspires me to create. An open-air museum that's attracting more and more creatives in need of spaces. Spaces like this gallery that was recently opened by a restaurant owner with a passion for art. Today, the organizer of an upcoming exhibition entitled Origins is meeting the author of these works. An opportunity to go over final details before the big day. This young Nigerian discovered Bassam on a visit two years ago. He has since uprooted his life and settled in the Ivorian city, which he describes as a creative sanctuary. Uh, I was seeing photos of the place in the 70s and Bassam looks exactly like that. And I also like the fact that everyone is able to create things that are very, very unique, but at the same time exploring similar topics. Themes such as identity and the origin of the divine, which the featured artist, Balou, addresses through his sculptures and paintings of opulent women. He draws his inspiration everywhere, including from his peers. All the artists here are in contact with each other. We visit each other's studio. There is no competition because each person has their own style. We head to the suburbs of Grand Bassam, in Zach's workshop, the designer of a clothing brand called Pelebe. He moved to Bassam in 2018, pressed by the rising cost of living in the economic capital, Abidjan. My studio is quite big. I can do what I want. It's really quiet here. What more could you ask for? What's also great is that it's a creative city with local craftsmen you can work with. Craftsmen whose livelihoods are under threat. The artisanal village of Grand Bassem, considered the largest in West Africa, was once one of the city's most popular tourist sites. But the political crises that have marred the country, along with the more recent pandemic, have resulted in a major drop in tourism. This is a significant loss of income for local talents like Ali, a dyer with whom Zach has been working for several years. Back in the day, business was good, but now there are no more tourists. Working with people like Zach definitely helps. These collaborations are not enough to make ends meet, says Zach, who's been pleading for sustainable public solutions. Tourism or no tourism, we have to find ways to give work to these people. It's their heritage, a local know-how that we must be able to preserve and pass on to future generations. Bassam remains a seaside resort favored by tourists because of its coastline. Fine sandy beaches and palm trees as far as the eye can see, nowadays plagued by pollution. It is precisely the preservation of the Bassam coast that is at the heart of Daddy's work, a young photographer and visual artist. Today I'm collecting trash that reminds me of nets. At the moment I'm working on a series about the violence towards nature. Photo shoots held at nightfall and featuring a character with objects recovered from the beach have become his signature. Daddy's art intends to carry a message of awareness. For me, this coast represents the place where my culture took shape over centuries. It was the gateway to this culture, so it's important for me to return to these places, to reconnect with my culture, history, and better understand who I am. Understanding oneself through one's environment. Such is the prized opportunity that Bassam offers to its community of artists.